I wasn't happy with that last taping, so I'm just going to do it again. Remember, this person now is relaxed. They're sitting or lying down. Maybe someone's even uh, rubbing their feet. And now I want to get a better taping on this. So again, I'm going to get one side of it stuck well down here close the wound with my fingers and put the other piece of tape on. See how tight that came together now? Now again, if there's a little blood or, you won't have pus yet, but sometimes you can have blood or plasma coming out, just clean it up. Now I got it good and tight. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do another one. This is quite a big wound and it's deep wound. A banana really shows you what a deep wound is like because that's if you cut through a lot of layers of your skin. And now pinch it together and close it. Now you can tell the person before you pinch it together to take a deep breath because uh, sometimes it's going to be a little traumatic to them because you're, you're touching and handling the area that's injured. But usually right now they're in a little bit of shock and uh, you can get away with something that you wouldn't be able to get away with an hour from now. And then uh, this last area, well, I'm going to pinch it together, but you can see there's a little plasma, a little debris coming out of there. I'm going to clean that up for a minute. And uh, so I got a nice contact. I'm going to dry uh, this finger, arm, or leg a little bit here. Then I'm going to apply my tape to the bottom, get a good pinch together draw it together, and get that tape down. And I would say that this person here is not even going to have a scar. Uh, you can clean the wound a little bit like this. And now remember your backup tape. On uh, a wound like this, I'm going to want to take my tape here and back up these butterfly bandages or this wound closure strip uh, because I want to back up. I don't totally trust them, and that felt a little weak there, so I'm going to put on a double backup. Really get this down. Um, the same thing on this side. Uh, you can take a piece of tape, get the size you need, and cover it up this way, just like this. I like to leave the wound open as possible, like I said earlier, so it can breathe. Back that tape up. Now, on difficult areas, or where the wound isn't behaving well, I've been known to tape it again on top, put more closure strips on and more butterfly bandages. Now, some wounds aren't like cuts. They're not as neat and pretty as these. Uh, this person won't need any stitches, won't need any staples, um, and the scar, well, they're not gonna have one. But some wounds uh, are a little different. Let me see if I can demonstrate that. It's wonderful if people just cut themselves in the kitchen with a knife and you can do a job like this and they'll have no scar and it all comes back together. But unfortunately, some people, it looks a little more like this. They got ripped pieces of skin. This is more of a cut, what you'll experience. This is more of a wound. So I just wanna show you what I do for wounds using all the same procedures. The first thing with a wound, you have an open area is again, uh, make sure you get plenty of your anti-infection in here, uh, flooding and flushing the area. But now remember, now we're gluing. And simply what I do is make sure there's no debris in there, check it. Put your anti-infection in and just put the piece back. Okay, just glue it down. Just put the flap of skin. I put people's whole kneecaps back on this way. And if you have a piece that's missing or come off, well, I'm a believer. I always give it a shot. Why not? All we're doing is putting a jigsaw puzzle back together. Put a little glue, your anti-infection glue on here. And try to fit the piece back. Uh, I would do it just like that. Okay. Now I put the pieces in parts. You might have an area, well, it's, it's a mess. And there might be a little bit of a hole. No problem. Uh, but I try to stuff every little bit like that back in. Um, I try to use it all. If the skin's going to die, let it die. And then do a little bit of a cleanup job. And look at that. That was, that was looking horrible a few minutes ago, and now it looks like it's almost back together. 
and then carefully, again, with your wound strips or butterfly bandages, put it all back together. Oh, it might look a little bit about like Frankenstein or Frankenstein Jr., but don't worry about it. Uh, do your best at putting the body back together again. You know, often in the hospital, they would have removed that piece and removed this piece, but I want to put it all back together again. We don't do skin grafts. We let your body bring skin back. You know, I was told with this hand right here that I had fourth degree burns onto the bone, that I'd never have skin again. And in 30 days, I had plenty of skin. So just put the parts back together like this. Let me tell you something. If you would have gone with this wound to the hospital, they probably would have cut this piece off right here and just eliminated it. And you'd end up having a hole in your finger, and then they'd be stitching this area to this area, and it would be too tight where it didn't belong. And this is a hospital job right here. You got a freaking mess. My way is the best way, my friends. And you can do it at home. You can put your body back together. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about treating fractures and broken bones, or any time a bone in the body is injured. Now, a fracture is just when the, when the bone gets stressed to the point where it splits a little bit in an area, okay? Uh, a broken bone is more serious, and of course you can have a compound fracture where the bone is just separated. Usually in the case of a compound fracture, you're probably going to want to get uh, trauma, surgery, hospitalization, uh, get this bone put back together. But not always. I mean, uh, and still in many primitive areas of the world, they have bone setters who soak uh, your, your bone and your body uh, in herbs, your leg or your arm or wherever the bone is broken, uh, with herbs like arnica and uh, calendula and the herbs that are in my deep tissue oil and ointment. Um, but generally speaking, in this country, most people seek uh, trauma, medical, emergency help at that point. But many times, uh, uh, or the vast majority of times, an injury, a fractured bone, is only a small fracture. And it is not necessary to go to the hospital for a fractured bone. Often you can tell that you have a fracture because you have a lot of pain and you have a lot of swelling in the area. First, with a fracture or any type of broken bone, you want to start out with ice immediately. Make your ice bag. Again, crush the ice, wet it, get it really cold, and get it right on that area. That's going to relieve the pain right away and keep the swelling in check so it doesn't get totally out of control. But swelling isn't your enemy. Remember, the things that the body does, it's doing to heal and repair you. And that's why it's swelling, because swelling immobilizes the area. Pain keeps you from using the area. So pain and swelling are important parts of the healing process. But go ahead and use your ice. And the next thing you want to do is aid that swelling by immobilizing the area even more. Now, one of the ways you can do it is just with some cardboard and some duct tape or electrical tape. I'm going to show you here with my arm. So just imagine that my arm was fractured right here from a fall on roller skates or whatever. Well, just find some good corrugated cardboard and make sure the corrugations are running this way or they're running the same way as the area of your body. And then just fold it up, okay? And do the same with the other side. Just fold it up, just like this, and bring it right together, okay? Now we've made a splint just with corrugated cardboard. Now, I'm doing this on myself, so it's a little more difficult. So I'm going to apply some pieces of tape to begin, at least so I can get it started. And uh, duct tape doesn't always behave, but that's okay. Again, this doesn't have to look pretty. And now I'm going to put my arm back in it and close it up. And I'm going to have to hold it myself here and get that tape over on it. Now, the first piece of tape might not be perfect. No problem. Get that split in tight and get it on. Okay, now if I want it even tighter, that's not a problem now because I already got it initially on. Okay, so 
Now I can close it down tight and wrap it up even more. In fact, didn't behave. Duct tape has a mind of its own sometimes, and it doesn't always behave. But you can get it on and close it up really, really tight and put it down. And now you have a splint. And the best thing about this splint, my friends, is you can take it off when you need it. In fact, sometimes splints, you can just slip off an area like this. And the important thing is because you're going to want to put ice on that area. And you're going to want to put your deep tissue oil and your deep tissue ointment on this area to get it to heal back up. Because we have the bone healers in there of Arnica and Calendula. And so we want to heal this area. We're going to want to do hot and cold the next couple days on this area. And we're going to want to get some great body work done on our hand to move the energy. And you can't do that with a plaster cast on. If you ever have a cast put on, make sure it's a removable cast, not a plaster cast. A horrible thing because you can't heal the area. And now we can go in and work and do our hot and cold. We can put on our herbal ointments like the deep tissue oil and ointment. We can get body work on this area, and we can build another cast or put this cast, well, there we go. We can put this cast back on any time we want. Obviously, you would have someone else doing this, and you wouldn't be trying to do it yourself. But just with a little duct tape and cardboard, and if you needed the cast to be stronger, like if it's on your leg, you can use a couple layers of corrugated cardboard. You can even use pieces of wood as splints and put them on top of the cardboard and uh, make your cast that way. But I want to tell you a couple stories here. The vast majority of time you have a bone fracture. It's what's called a green stick fracture or a little splint. Doctors aren't going to do anything for it anyway. They're going to give you an x-ray. They're going to say you have a fracture. They're going to put a cast on you that may not be able to be removed. And that's it. They're going to tell you to go home. You know, re they might give you some anti-inflammatories, or they might do worse. They might decide to do surgery. You know, recently, I had a friend that had a fracture skiing. We were all skiing together, and she fell down and fractured her tibia, the top of her tibia in her leg. Uh, she went to emergency, and I looked at the x-rays, and sure enough, she had a little fracture in the top of her tibia. She went to see an orthopedic doctor, and the orthopedic doctor said, you know what, just rest, immobilize the area, and it's going to all come back together just fine. Uh, your body knows how to heal and repair you. But they weren't satisfied, so they went to a second doctor, and the second orthopedic surgeon said the same thing. Look, don't worry. It's a small fracture. Just immobilize the area, and you'll be fine in a few weeks, a month, a month and a half. But they weren't satisfied. They went to a third orthopedic doctor, and I think they were going to continue till they found a doctor that was going to do surgery. Well, finally, the third doctor said, well, it could heal on its own, but you could lose a little bit of the mobility in the joint, so we better do surgery. And, of course, that's what they did. Now, what do you think you would do if you lost a little bit of mobility in a joint? I would suggest after the area heals, stretch. Do some yoga. You can get that mobility back. It's nothing to worry about. But doctors are famous for making a big deal out of something that isn't. So I've dealt with so many patients that have fractured bones. All you do is use some ice, use your deep tissue, immobilize the area, get back in there with hot and cold after 24 hours and some body work. Uh, immediately start juice fasting. I think with any injury, it's best to go off solid food and just drink juices, make your fresh organic vegetable juices and your fresh organic fruit juices. This is going to build your bones back up, all that natural calcium and the carrot juice, that's the white foam on top. Drink your juices, get your nutrition, do some bowel cleansing. Use this as a time to really heal your body, and the next thing you know, your bones will be growing back just fine.